Hey, 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 y'all. Hey, y'all. How is it going today? I am so excited for today. I have been getting so many questions about Aaron. My goodness, I need to increase my revenue right now. What can I do? So on today's episode, we are going to break down the number one most profitable revenue stream that you can do and get going right now. And if you're coming in live, say, hey, Aaron, what's up? Give me some love. Let me know. Type in the comments that you're here and where you're coming from. I always want to know who's joining me and where you're at in the world. Uh, even if you come in on the replay. If you come in on the replay, you can just type in hashtag replay and let me know, comment along the way. I always want to know who is with me. So, <clears throat> mm, excuse me, excuse me. I wanna make sure that we're good and going here for technology. Okay, yay, awesome. All right, so if you are new here, I am Erin Bird and I am the author of The Passion and Profit Project the creator of the hit list marketing system for studio owners, as well as the 100K Preschool Dance Blueprint Workshop and the Mobile Mastermind and teach preschool dance. So y'all, I am just like you and I grew up dancing and I absolutely love it and have a great passion for it. But I also knew that I wanted to turn it into something that was profitable and that created a unique option for so many families and so that allowed me also to create my unique vision of success i started my business with under a thousand dollars and we turned it into a six figure um revenue stream within the first two years so you can absolutely do this too but today we're going to talk about money we're going to talk about money so are you ready to break it down with me all right i know things have been crazy pants crazy pants the last 18 plus months right and so we as an industry have really struggled uh to bounce back and as we're starting to see things open back up as we're starting to see some forward motion in the world we need to talk about money because a lot of us have been on the struggle bus for the last two years right and it is time to get off the struggle bus it is time Y'all leaning in. Okay, so as I've been talking to studio owners this last week, this topic came up um, over and over again. Erin, how can I increase my revenue? What am I doing? Um, I know obviously that I need more students. How can we do that? We, we were breaking that part down. They're looking at multiple ways, multiple revenue streams for them to be able to, um, to include so we can have different revenue streams coming into their business but what is working right now what is working right now and so today that's what we're going to cover so of course we all know that tuition is probably our number one revenue stream right we go and we teach classes and people pay tuition and that is where the majority of your revenue comes from hey say what's up if you're here with me Reminder, if you're here with me, say, hey, what's up? Let me know that you're here. Uh, if you're coming on the replay, want to know that as well. But today we are, we're talking about money and we are talking about the number one most profitable revenue stream. I'm going to break that down. I'm going to disclose that to you. But first I wanted to talk about some of the other revenue streams that are uh, typical inside of our studios as well as ones that some of us may not have thought so much about. Okay, so. We know we all need to have revenue. We have tuition is our largest revenue stream. And right now, some of us are doing really great getting our students back in the door. Some are still struggling, depending on where you're at in the world. And so sometimes we have to shift some things to make sure that we are always calling in new leads, new students, new families. But I wanna share something that, that the quickest way through your, through in your studio right now to increase your revenue is to tap into your current clients, right? So if you have students that are only taking one class, let's just say, we need to have a process to encourage them to enroll in multiple classes, right? That is the quickest way to grow right now today is to encourage those students to enroll in secondary 
third classes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, because it is so much quicker and more efficient to grow within your own current client base than to try to pull in new. So if you do not have a process or a system in place to increase your uh, class numbers internally, that is something that you should absolutely be looking at doing, right? That is absolutely something. So if you don't have a, um, a system where you send out progress reports or classroom recommendations, y'all get on it. You don't have to wait until a new year to do this. You could do this today. Go through your rosters, see what other classes that you have available that would be that would work for that particular student. Have your teachers help you with this process. You guys, your numbers will increase exponentially by just going and saying, you know what? I noticed Sally is having a fantastic time. She's doing great. Whenever we do certain things, she's really intrigued. She really is engaged. And so I think she should try out, insert the other class, right? But I want you guys to lean in on what I just said. It's not just about us doing a blanket statement to our, to our student base. It's not a blanket statement like, come try new classes, right? You can absolutely do that. You could do open class week. You could, right? But the key is the connection, the connection. So we need our families, our parents, we need them to understand that we are thinking about their specific child. And that is where those little handwritten love notes that are specific for them mean the most, or that conversation that you're having one-on-one. -on -one. Because one of the things that we need to really focus on is humanizing, humanizing our brand and connecting with our customers. People need human connection. And so if you have not, if you have not um, done class recommendation, get on those right now. If you are not at the enrollment numbers that you want as far as uh, class spots filled, get on that right now. Y'all, quickest way to increase class average is by offering and giving suggestions. Now, you could do this in conjunction with Open Class Week, right? Da, 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 da. There's other things that we could do. And I have a whole system for that, but we won't get into that today. But that is the quickest way, something you could do today. You could do a starting, you know, you could get it all together and roll it out October 1st, y'all. You do not have to wait until the new year. You don't have to wait until next season to start introducing this. Get on this right now. It will make a difference as long as we have it thought out plan and we make sure that we're consistent and we offer this across the masses, right? Okay, so there's that. There's things like birthday parties, those are coming back. How do we amp those up? I've seen a lot of people are doing um, or starting to introduce, you know, different pop-up classes or pop-up events. So y'all, Halloween, it's coming up, it's around the corner. And if that's something that your families and your clients um, love to participate in, why not create a whole event inside your studio around that? You could sell tickets to that or wristbands or that sort of thing and make it an event, make it a fun thing that your families wanna do. And then you can also invite the community, right? So if you so desire. So there's things like that. Obviously we know there are revenue streams like uniforms and t-shirt sales and, um, you could have, you know, a snack bar that has snacks and drinks and all those sort of fun things. Um, those are all additional ways that you can increase your revenue. Okay. Making sure that we're good here. Oh, we popped up something. So y'all ready for it? You leaning in? Because I want to share with you right now the number one most profitable revenue stream that you can utilize and leverage to not only grow your numbers substantially right now, right, but also have a river of students that are flowing into your studio if you if you have one. Y'all leaning in? Okay. <clears throat> the number one way is to approach preschools and daycares and after school programs and offer your classes at their locations. 
I know I said it. Here's the thing. And I, this is what I hear all the time, but Aaron, but Aaron, right? But Aaron, <laughs> but Aaron, oh my gosh, I'm already so busy. I'm so overwhelmed with everything that I have to do. I get that. Right. I get that we all have a never ending to do list. Even I have a never ending to do list of things that needs to be done. But the truth is that that is a separate problem from you going out and offering this highly profitable program, because what you can do is you can actually increase your enrollment in your business like that. When I started this program and when I started going out to preschools and to daycares, when I started that, I approached my first daycare center at the beginning of the month. By the end of the month, I had 10 centers that I served and over 100 students that I enrolled in under 30 days. Y'all. That's crazy pants for so many of us. Think about how long it takes for us to, to bring new students in. Well, here's the deal. I was only going out a couple mornings a week, but I had added an extra 100 students to our business in 30 days. Now, the beautiful thing about this is they go through the program. You didn't have to increase the size of your studio, right? Uh, you get to go out there and then when they're ready and they're done in preschool and daycare and it's time for them to go to elementary school, what is the next natural step if they want to continue their dance journey? Of course, if you have a studio space, that's the next, the natural step, right? They are going to already have a relationship with you and so they will fill into your studio space if you have one. Now, if you don't have one, then you can partner with one that you uh, know, like, and trust and that you would feel comfortable referring families to. But for many of you, you have a physical studio space. And this is a great way to not only immediately increase and grow your preschool program, but then to continue having students flow right into your studio space into the older elementary ages, right? So I highly, highly encourage you to really think about approaching the preschools and daycares after school program in your area, because not only can you leverage this program and create something that is super lucrative for you, because you guys, I have to tell you, the profit margin is so high compared to your physical studio space. You're not paying for rent and for utilities and toilet paper and all those things that you pay inside your physical studio. You're not paying for those. When you go out and you teach your classes inside daycares and preschools. Okay, so this is the number one most profitable revenue stream that you can add on to your studio bar none. You can add an extra six figures and just this program alone. It's totally doable, actually fairly easy to do. Now I had someone the other day say, Erin, I don't live in a huge community. I don't live, I don't have a million people in our population. Can this still work? And the answer is absolutely. And you get to decide, you get to decide if you want to serve three preschools or if your community has the bandwidth, you know, maybe it's you want to grow this thing and you know, uh, really leverage it and take it to as big as you can get it. And maybe you want to have 500 students, let's just say, I don't know, I'm putting a number out there, in your mobile program. The choice is yours, right? The choice is yours. But as long as there are parents working, there will be children in preschool and daycare. You guys hear me? As long as there are parents who are working, Right? We all know parents are starting to return to work and or even if they're still working remotely, they are over, over, over trying to juggle the two, <laughs> right? Trying to work from home and having your kiddos at home. Um, it's a tough, it's a tough gig, <laughs> right? So what we're seeing is that even though a lot of parents are still maybe working remotely, they are having their children return to daycare, even part-time, even if it's 
two mornings a week, three mornings a week. They are having them because they need that really focused time to get all of their work done without interruptions. So as things are opening up, these are the trends that we're seeing. And now, of course, there's still centers that are full of full-time students because their parents, you know, they don't get to work remotely or um, maybe that's something they did before this all and they're just used to sending their kiddos to, to daycare. But that being said, y'all, you need to get on this because here's the deal. We all know about planning a show, right? What's coming? Oh, Nutcracker. Let's just say Nutcracker use that for an example, right? We know for Nutcracker, we probably were casting in August, right? We know that we were probably casting in August because our show is in December, right? Because we know we have to plan and we have to rehearse and we have to get the choreography down and we have to get all the details together to make sure the show is a success. Now, with approaching preschools and daycares, I want you to think of it in the terms of a show. And that if we want to launch this new program, let's just even say in January, we need to start getting our ducks in a row right now. Right? We need to start getting our ducks in a row right now. And I've had so many studio owners, I think, truthfully, I, I was taking a look and uh, this last week, week and a half, I've had over a hundred different educators, whether they're dance teachers, studio owners, um, I've had some who are retired who are looking at this as an option, reach out to me and ask about support when it comes to approaching daycares and preschools, because here's the thing, for so many of us, sales feels like, um, or this program going out and offering our services outside the four walls of our studio feels a little funny, right? It's not something in our wheelhouse. And so approaching these centers might feel a little scary. We might not know exactly what we need to do. And I've had so many reach out. And so what I want to do right now is I want to invite each and every one of you. Um, we are hosting the 100K Preschool Dance Blueprint Workshop in Orlando, October 15th through 17th. Now, I understand that traveling might be hard right now. I absolutely, what I did was I wanted to make sure that for those of you that were committed, who were like, this is something I know I want to do. It's been something I've been thinking about for a while. I just didn't know what to do. I wanted to make sure that I was there and fully present for you live in person if that's what you wanted to do. But because I had so many requests and so many people reaching out to me the last week and a half, um, and I got so many requests, Erin, is there a virtual option? I just can't travel yet, right? Or, um, you know, we have something else going on that weekend, but if I could do it here from home or from my studio, I think I could make it work. So we do have a virtual option as well. We do have a virtual option as well. So you could come in person, which I would absolutely love to be in person with you, but if that is not a possibility, you can absolutely do it virtually. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll come in and I'll pop the, um, the info into the comments for y'all so you can get more information about the 100K Preschool Dance Blueprint Workshop. It, I only do this once a year. Y'all, I only offer this workshop once a year. Uh, and let me tell you, it is full of all of the things that you need to be successful and launch. I don't hold anything back. That's not my style. I give you the exact steps that I took to launch my own mobile program, as well as all of my clients around the globe that have used the same system and been successful and added 50 new students, 100 new students, 170 new students, 200 new students. We have clients all over the globe that have used this system that came to the workshop they implemented what they learned, and now they have a very lucrative mobile program that is working for them even during this pandemic. I said it, y'all, even during the pandemic. So you do not want to miss out on your opportunity to come to the 100K Preschool Dance Blueprint Workshop. Oh, my gosh. Y'all, here we go. <laughs> so I'm going to leave y'all there. It has been a fantastic day. Let me know in the comments. 
did you, have you thought about approaching preschool to daycares? Is it something that's been on your brain that hmm, maybe I want to do this, but I don't know exactly how? Let me know in the comments and I would love to chat with you some more. So you guys, what is the revenue stream that you're going to focus on leveraging and growing right now? Let me know. I will see you all next week. I want you to know that we actually will be shifting things next week. We are going to be moving the Aaron Bird live show. It is going to be moved to Aaron, the Aaron Bird coaching business page. Okay, we're going to move it to the business page starting next week. Ah! Um, Facebook allows us to do more analytics and get more results. And if you know me, I'm a numbers gal and I want to make sure that everything is measurable and trackable. And so this is exactly why we're moving things to our business page. So know that next week it will still be Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, but it will be on the Aaron Bird Coaching business page. If you have not liked and followed that page, make sure you go there and click that little follow and like button. That way you can get all the details and all the goodness that comes from the Aaron Bird Show live. I'm going to leave you there. Have a fantastic week, y'all, and I will see you soon. Bye, guys.